Hello and welcome to the Iceman channel. I hope that the audio is working on both channels today, otherwise yeah, some of you will be a little bit unhappy. Today we're going to talk about this, a Super Nintendo World power-up band. This was a gift from uh, Evil Damon when he visited Japan and visited this park, amusement park. It's used to uh, charge up and interact on different readers and power-ups and stuff like that in the amusement park and he thought it was cool to give it to me. Well, the reason why it's cool to give it to me is because it has an RFID tag in it and you know, I, I like that stuff. If we just open this beautiful box up, there's nothing in there, but here you see this little rubber band thing. I got the Mario band. Oh, oh. really tight thing. Here. And it wraps up, it has this nice little thing. Woo. Mario, Zip World, QR code, same thing as that one there. And if I smack it on, it sits very nicely like that. See, Mario, cool. Given that this is an RFID tag, I thought of yes, you know, hook it up to a Brockmark and see what it is. So let's do that. Because what I ended up having to do is it led me to a, a whole of things and changes that I had to do and looking at data sheets because this is not an ordinary tag that I thought it was. So join me now in this funny little journey. Oh, my broke my out. I put the little tag down there on the reader, on the proxmark. This for the use case of this, I'm going to show you Steamboat Willy. Meanwhile, you do HF search. And you see that it finds a ISO 4438A tag. Ignore this part, it's because I have a firmware from my modified version, which is not on the Steamboat wheelie. So ignore this, you can just that. It's identified as possible MyFair Outlight or N tag. So let's go over to MFU info and see what happens. All right, cool. It's got identified. It's an Antag I2C plus. So that's a different story. This is a uh, mutual tag that uses both an NFC and I2C communication on a shared memory, or you can limit it. It's a bit different. So we haven't seen too many of those out there right now. Silicon info is not bad. That's the version. We all got it down. Unlimited password attempts means that we can try the, to find the default password, which we find. And then we can run it with that password and see what on earth is going on. And nothing much happens. Okay, I got another hint here and I can't read tag memory. So that's what it is, but I didn't care very much when I looked at it. So I went over to dump and I did the no save, which doesn't exist on that one. I know there's a key, so I have to take the key called BFE1D203. This is where I were at. I was looking at the memory. It's a big memory, a lot of empty data. This is the QR code that you saw in the, if you scan that one, this is what you're gonna see there. There's a lot of more data here. And I suspected since it's Nintendo that this is an Amy Boo, because that key there should be an Amy Boo key. Got a signature here. And I'm like, cool, okay. Odd that I don't see the signature here because I'm pretty sure that we have that. So that's the first odd that I thought of and I didn't think more of it. It saves it and I was trying to add a MFU uh, view command and when I did do that, this is where my path into the rabbit's hole started. Failed to convert the new Altered N tag for more because I just dumped it and it worked. 
what is going on? Turns out that I needed to go into here and when I was looking code, because I'm all, I was looking source code when I do stuff. I wanted to go into the view and I was kind of knowing that it didn't convert. So this is where you see that fail message. All right, we go in there and you do here. Obviously it's not doing correct here and it goes for this. And it fails on this one. Ignore this. This is my change. So this is where I'm going like, huh, you know, because a normal outlet for a normal end tag, uh, the first one is a CT 0x88 or hexadecimal for 88. And then you XOR it with the first three bytes of the data. And then you compare that with fourth byte of blocks zero. And that's how I identify that the first three blocks is actually a valid UID. So if it's there, this is a new format that we use, but it's failing. And I'm like, why is it failing? So this is where I start looking at uh, this data. So this free together with 88 should be this. All right, cool. Let's do that. We have another command in the Proxmo client called LCR because that's what it is. And if I do that, it says that I need 81. And 81 is pretty much far away from 6a. And then these should be this one. Should be. Enough, none of this was correct. I'm like, I'm, I'm going blind here somewhere. What am I doing wrong? So when I was looking at the UID, I realized that this is the four first of the UID. And when I read block block zero, this shouldn't be the first four blocks, uh, first four bytes of a block of a UID on block zero. It should be only these, and this should be a BCC. And if you don't believe me, I had to go to the beloved data sheets. So this is the data sheet for normal end tag. And if you head down to a member organization, you go down here and you see UID serial number and it says zero, one, two, three, and then that's the check byte for page zero or block zero. Um, I'm, I'm confused. Um, what am I doing? So I, <laughs> this is the funny part now, because I went back, of course, and I changed to a, to a, to an M tag. I was like, well, what is going on? Let's, let's see what's going on with an M tag. So I went back here and I'm like, yeah, let's see. Let's go for a normal end tag. Okay, this looks nice. Here you go. Here's the password. Here's identification. This is not even right. Okay, cool. Let's read block zero then. And if we look at this here, oh yeah, let's go for it. For a reader instead. We see that this one, two, three, and this matches. And if I go for the this part here, zero F, B5, it gives me 36, which is correct and matches. So I'm now I'm thinking, is there a bug in the tag I to see tag? Wow, that's sneaky of Nintendo to do that. Because if I read block one, It should do the same. And remember on the browser again here that we should have on page one, that should be a complete serial number, zero, one, two, three. That should just be the serial number and the check byte is on the uh, block two on the first byte. So going back here, this should be a UID from this tag. And I see that it's not this part. 
And this is where I start realizing, hold on, this is not right. I think I know what's going on. So, so I'm looking at this and then this, and I realize that this is the whole UIA, UID, like that. And now I'm convinced that N tag I2C is actually, you know, messed up or something. However, however, back to the data sheets with you. So this is N tag, and then I went over and got the N tag I2C data sheets. And then we can head down and look at something called member organization. And then we can see that here's a zero number, oh, that's fine. But how is that broken down? We go a little bit now, a little bit more. And where is it? Here's Syrian on the UID. And then you see that they have actually, like they're saying, UID 1, 2, 3, 4, the four first bytes of UID, and then comes the rest of it, and then comes the SAK, ATQA, and Q0. So this is not at all like this. Now I knew that I have a whole heap of trouble inside the Proxmo client for the Mifra Altalites commands because this is not correct and i'm like oh, okay that's odd that's not good at all and i also see something called ori originality signature and if you remember when we ran it we didn't get anything like that so let me head over to you here so if we run this one again we don't get any signature route here from this one so, I had to do a whole heap of different stories. I had to go in, I had to figure out a new way to identify the tags, that is an n tag one, two, three, uh, I to see tag when they are and uh, not the same. When we read a dump file, we only have a data in the dump file for a binary, we don't know very much more. You know, compare things a little bit better. But in this situation, when I'm just looking at the binary, I don't. So I added this new check for uh, for the SOC and ATQ, added up there, and then started out fiddling with the rest of the things in the uh, uh, MFU commands. Now I'm going to show you that, but I'm going to go back to where I were and show you the results of what I did. For now, when we run MFU info, you will see that it properly reads and identify the signature. It also identifies the, the password and the fingerprint is working now and it tells me the right way of command to dump this data. I can dump that data, but I don't need to save it. I can do Z for uh, another version that I implement now is the compressed output. It means that I don't have to see the whole repetitions of zeros. So it focuses a little bit more. I can now see that the signature is correct, the version is correct like before. We load this up here, or we dump this one up here and down. We can now should be, a, ooh, we should be able to view this one straight up. So we can view it, uh, let's view with set because it's compressed, so a little bit easier to see. And you see that we load up this one correctly. So now view is working, loading of it, we can see it, we can identify it, the signature is there. And uh, some improvements for the MFU because MFU info finds the key now and identifies properly as an amiibo power-up band, which is cool. It's all these things that I had to do. I see that I still have something to add and that would be the, the breaking down of this. This should be a uh, NDEF message available here. So let's do that. Let's do that. 
it should be an in-depth message and uh, let's see what happens if we can uh, find it so we, it has to be somewhere around tag signature print signature dip, 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 dip. nope 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 here's and if here's this and here is this okay so where's this one called here we go it's called data plus 12 okay data plus 12 is one two three four right that should be here so this one should be it all right cool we jump back and let me see if that check doesn't work it didn't work so enormous amount of manual decoding of things isn't it f1 cool <laughs> shouldn't be like that then. let's go back the wrong comparison there and now we still don't have it interesting but it should be in here and wrong comparison All right Look, an end of message. Let's see what we can do about that. But that is too much for this video. I'm just gonna say, uh, thank you, Evil Diamond, for this magnificent, nice and beautiful bracelet. Yay, Mario! But now give me so much joy in improving the Proxima client just for the fun of it or yeah, in order to read it. Well, you can do more things. You can also then hook up uh, I2C circuitry to this one and read it up. But then I have to break all the nice rubber coating and all this one. So I don't know if I want to do that, but yeah, maybe you should let me know in the comments below if you want me to do that, break it up and see what you can do more with it. Of course, it's very interesting. Well, at least I think it is interesting. I hope that you also found it interesting and realizing, you know, as long as you master your own tools, you can always improve and overcome problems that you didn't see before. Iceman out.